Welcome back to Storytime, and we have some more unusual pet books. But first, get those hands ready and those fingers wiggling, and you're gonna wiggle your fingers, wiggle them so, wiggle up high and wiggle down low, and wiggle to the left and wiggle to the right, and wiggle your fingers out of sight. Good job. We'll do that again. Ready, wiggle? Wiggle your fingers, wiggle them so, wiggle up high and wiggle down low and wiggle to the left and wiggle to the right and wiggle your fingers out of sight. Good job. Our first book is called Charlotte and the Rock. We have another pet rock like we did earlier. Charlotte Gray wanted a pet. You think she's gonna get a pet at the end or is she just gonna get a rock? She didn't care what kind of pet, a dog, a cat, a hamster, even a pig would do. So on her sixth birthday, Charlotte's parents bought her a, what did they get her? It was on the cover, do you remember? A pet rock! Is that exciting? No, I wouldn't want a pet rock. It wasn't quite what Charlotte had in mind, but she tried to remain positive. The rock, after all, was a good listener. It was also quite easy to train. And it was hypo hypoallergenic, which is good for Grandma Glennis. She was allergic to almost everything. So maybe our rock won't be such a bad pet. But as with any pet, some things prove difficult. Walks were not fun. Look at her pull. Would you want to pull that big rock all the way up the hill? Really not fun. Oh no, it's rolling away from her. The rock's lack of appetite was annoying, and it was not much help getting her out of trouble at school. You said, what ate your homework? Asked Charlotte's teacher. Could you tell them that a rock ate your homework? Do rocks even eat? No. But soon, Charlotte and the rock became best friends. They played games and pretended to be superheroes they read comic books, and they even went swimming. So maybe it's not such a bad pet after all. Let's see what else she can do. One day, a neighbor was walking and her, walking her dog and asked, what's your pet's name? Dennis, Charlotte proudly said. We chose it together. Look, she has four different names. She has Henry, Max, Sam, and Dennis. And the rock landed on Dennis. Charlotte loved her pet so, so, so very much. But she couldn't help but wishing that it could love her back. Charlotte patted her rock and let out a sigh. <sighs> At bedtime that night, Charlotte kissed her rock goodnight and fell fast asleep. Dennis, however, couldn't sleep. Uh-oh. <gasps> Crack! Oh, oh no, it opened! He knew that Charlotte needed a hug. <gasps> what do you think was inside? What kind of animal do you think Dennis is? <gasps> a big one. She got a pet. A dinosaur wasn't quite what Charlotte's parents had in mind, but they tried to remain positive. After all, Dennis was a great listener, pretty good at hide and seek, and easy to train. Well, sort of. All right, let's give a clap for Charlotte and her rock. 
And I'm going to have you grab your scarf, your washcloth, your dish towel, your sock, whatever you have. We are going to do our scarf song. Ready? Can I shake? have another book today we have if I had a griffin do you think griffins make good pets last week I got a hamster my first and only pet he mostly eats and sleeps and hides and gets his shavings wet does he look happy with his hamster If only I could have a pet with strained, exotic powers, I know that I'd find lots to do to while away the hours. Do you think exotic pets are good pets? Or do you think they're probably not very pets, right? If I had a unicorn, I'd braid her silky mane. I'd make her silver horseshoes that twinkled in the rain. We'd prance through fields of posies and nibble nectarines. I'd shine her horn with candy corn to get a starry sheen. Unicorns are pretty, but they're also very shy. That's not a good pet, right? On second that Second thought, I'd like to give a hippogriff a try. Do you think the hippogriff is going to be a good pet? A hippogriff leads not, need, needs lots to do, like run and jump and fetch. I'd take him to the dog park to give his wings a stretch. Do you think he's good at the dog park? No, right? Though a hippogriff is tons of fun, the dogs might find him scary. And when it comes to playing ball, well, things could get quite hairy. So maybe not a hippogriff. Perhaps I'll get a Sasquatch with burly, curly fur. But then I'd spend three hours a day attacking snarls and burrs. Get a lot of brushing if you get a Sasquatch for a pet. If I had a griffin, I'd love each flashing feather, but she needs flying every day, regardless of the weather. <gasps> if I had a kraken, we'd swim and deep sea dive, but I would need a scuba suit in order to survive. Haven't found a good pet yet. You think we're gonna be able to find a good pet? If I had a dragon with a temperamental snout, I need a fire extinguisher to put her sneezes out. It's not a good pet either. A Kirk 
gherkin needs a field of grass, at least an ocean wide, and a jackalope needs sturdy reins for bumpy, jumpy rides. So neither one of those are good pets. A phoenix needs a chimney nest that's smoke and fireproof, and a manticore needs special floss for each and every tooth. Who would want to floss that? Harpies are too screechy, and chupacabras like to bite. Fairies play too many tricks, and kelpies hate the light. A basculus is slippery, and chimra likes to scratch. Mermaids brush their hair all day, and sprites are hard to catch. So far, we haven't been able to find one. <gasps> but perhaps a hamster's not so bad. In fact, he's rather sweet. I love his furry belly and his teeny tiny feet. He may not be a griffin or a creature from the sea, but I am his and he is mine. And that's enough for me. The hamster is a good pet. <gasps> Unlucky. All right, let's give a clap for our pets. All right, thank you for joining me for story time, and I will see you again tomorrow. Bye.